Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of Eve Echoes. Tonight, we're going we're going to continue with episode two of our player structure tutorial series, and we're going to pick up right where we left off from part one. If you uh, missed it, please check out the playlist below or check it out on my channel. Today we're going to talk about how to anchor it, um, what's this thing about fitting the encapsulated outpost, and how to manage it, like fuel and stuff and permissions. It's pretty simple, but, uh, you know, there's the little things that matter. Before we get onto our subject for today, uh, please uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you like what we're doing here. Uh, in the previous episode, we learned how to build the Capsulator Outpost. And, you know, I really wanted to touch on the purpose of the Capsulator Outpost. Well, it's an extension of one player. It's not something um, that an entire corporation can manage. It's not something manageable at a corporation uh, level, meaning you won't be able to find it in uh, the corporation menu. Uh, but you will be able to find it in the player menu. It will appear in your character uh, sheet because it's your station. The Capsule Outpost is exactly what it says it is. It's one station managed by one player. I mean, the player can deploy, the player can use it. Of course, you can set permissions for others to use it as well, but it's basically yours if you deploy it, anchor it, and activate it. So even though it's a capsule outpost, this, uh, I at least on my recommendations, is not to do this solo because it'll just get blapped by others. So what I'm recommending is you putting the station, the capsule outpost, but having an entire corporation backing it up. And we'll quickly see what I mean by that. But before we get to the to that point, we're just going to grab it from the inventory, we just built it, and we're going to move it into our Tyra. So, remember on our last episode, I mentioned something that you anchor it somewhere where it's not visible by other people. Well, there's a an interesting twist to that. You see, our posts have some specific criteria you need to follow in order to be able to launch them. So let's get into our inventory right here. We have the capsule outpost. We're going to try to launch it, right? That is, we're going to try to anchor it. So we're going to zoom out a bit. We're near as an existing station. So it's already going to get flagged as red because Dirt, you can't deploy it near an existing station. There's some, there's some criteria that you need to follow. So we've got number of structures available for current system, one out of seven. Must be over 5,000 kilometers away from any existing structures. Must be within 3 AU, which is the astronomical unit. Uh, you know, basically the distance from Earth to the Sun. Uh, and it must be bit, uh, within the 3 AU of any planet. Distance required between structures and planet warping point 50 kilometers, meaning you cannot just uh, warp to a planet and just plant it there. And no overlay with other collidable objects. Now I can zoom out and I can move my station uh, so it can be. Uh, nope, unfortunately, it needs to be 5,000 kilometers away. I'm unable to find such a space. Well, See, that must be within 3 AU of any planet. Um, well, it turns out that if you find a correct spot in, uh, in the system, no one will be able to find it except you and the people that you give permission to. Now, it's re really, really important once you set up the station that none of your corporation mates or even you start setting up market sell orders. As soon as you set up those market sell orders and somebody notices them on the market, they're going to bookmark that destination and your outpost will be visible. <laughs> your outpost will be seen by the person that manages to bookmark it or set the destination um, and reach it. And basically everyone will be able to get to it. 
So you really want to avoid any kind of market transactions laid down inside the capsule layer outpost. So how do you find an ideal location for the capsule layer outpost? Well, let's get into the map because that's pretty easy to do <laughs> since the map was updated. This is really, really easy to navigate and I'm quite proud of it. Uh, we're going to get into the solar system. So as you can see, this is the solar system. Unfortunately, uh, uh, the sensitivity is really bad. Um, and we don't have like the location you are here, uh, which is should be a pin uh, in here showing you uh, where exactly you are located. Fortunately, we do not have that. We might have that in the future. Um, probably better sensitivity as well. Uh, I'm guessing these will be hitting when the exploration will be deployed. Yep. If you remember, we got exploration coming. Uh, it's going to get to live somewhere around mid-year uh, this year. So we're going to take a look at the um, at the planets which sit around uh, well this specific sun. And you're going to notice something. Uh, for example, this is uh, the planet X, and this one contains planet nine and with a bunch of gates. Now, where should I locate my uh, corporation outpost so it would not be visible? Well, turns out that if you lay, lay it down between the planets, well, uh, players are going to find that eventually because warping from planet to planet is going to be visible. So you want to pick like the planet that is situated on the outermost ring. In our case, it's going to be planet uh, planet uh, 9. But if we do that, it's sitting close to that gate. And also, um, I would really recommend setting up something that it's near gates or other planets, even though it's an elliptical orbit and it's not in the same plane. I would go for this remote location right here, not in the center where, the, uh, where most of the planets are concentrated because it's going to be easy to spot. No, I'm talking about this one. Planet X, I'm going to uh, warp to it. As you can see, I'm currently located around planet 3. Uh, you can see that in the top left corner. So I've just engaged my warp drive and I'm going to lay down a save location. How much until destination? That's 23 AU. Remember, it needs to be within 3 AU of that. So we can lay it right here and we just lay down our bookmark in the middle of nowhere. So we're going to warp exactly to this bookmark we've just created, which is in the middle of nowhere, like I mentioned. We've reached planet 10. Now we are not able to launch the corporation, uh, sorry, the player, the capsule layer outpost uh, right here on the planet. We need to be at least 50 kilometers away from the warping point. But fear not, we're just going to warp to the bookmark that we just created. And this should put us in a nice position that is really hard to detect, uh, really hard to, to spot by any other player. Well, most of the players will just go to the sun, uh, try to scan from there. We don't have D scan yet, but it's, you know, this, this thing is going to work um, until the exploration will be introduced because basically then everyone will have access to scanner probes and everyone will be able to scan down your station. But if you don't give permissions uh, uh, as public permissions or whatever neutral uh, to the uh, capsule layer outpost, the outpost won't be visible to other people except you and the people that you gave, gave permissions to. So it's really, really nice that you can hide it in plain sight. And given the fact that you're going to put this into a safe spot location, it's going to be hard even after exploration is being introduced for people to figure out that there's a station in here and they need to scan it down. I mean, they will need actually need to scan down every system in order to find your outpost. So let's see how far we are from a planet uh, planet 10. 
we are uh, within a 0 0.33 AU. Uh, there we are. So it's safe to launch the uh, capsule air outpost. So we're just going, how to launch it? It's pretty simple. We just go to the inventory inside our ship where we stash our capsule air outpost and we hit launch. And now no overlay with other collidable objects. Well, it's pretty obvious it's colliding with our ship. Duh. So we're just going to put this uh, here. No, we can put this here or whatever. And we can even rotate it. <laughs> so let's put it in this area like that. So from here on out, you just click next and you enter a name. So here we get to the um, reinforcement uh, deactivation time. We're going to touch about re uh, touch on reinforcement in another episode because it's a big subject that uh, people need to understand how it works and I'm really not uh, cramp it up inside this one. So I just click OK and basically from here on out, the capsule outpost would enter a 15 minutes uh, timer in preparation mode, after which it will start anchoring and anchoring will uh, last for about 24 hours. So after 24 hours, you'll get something like this. Uh, the capsule outpost is going to uh, be anchored and it's going to activate, but it's not going to be active at its full potential. Remember what we said in the previous episode. We actually need to fit something. But what is the purpose of the capsule outpost? We already mentioned that is an extension of you as a pilot. It allows you to uh, create a, an outpost, an avant-garde in space somewhere uh, where you can, uh, depending on what you fit on it, it, it as a service center, allows you to gather PI materials or allows you to uh, like build ships, build stuff, you know, refine the ore, uh, which is basically the industry service component. So if you click on the caption layer outpost, you'll notice that it says vulnerable low power. Why does it say that? Well, because there's nothing fitted to it. So let's stock up and start fitting and start talking about uh, what means to fit the Capsule Layer Outpost because the Capsule Layer Outpost has a fitting screen. It has some uh, high slots, some low slots and some med slots that you can fill up with stuff uh, depending what you want to achieve. So. I've got some stuff in, in in the inventory right here. So I've got the industry service center. I've got the resource extraction center that I want to fit. I've got the standard small um, missile launcher, which uh, is basically a weapon. Uh, there's three types of weapons. There's a small missile launcher, there's a medium, and there's a large. Now, depending on what kind of stuff you want to defend against, I recommend fitting the same stuff. Uh, the the difference is in DPS, for example, the standard standard stand up small missile launcher has around 65.95 DPS and a missile range of 124 kilometers. The explosion the explosion radius is 40 meters and the explosion velocity is 107 meters. Uh, if we go to the next one, remember those stats. Uh, we're going to see bigger stuff like explosion velocity 81 meters per second and explosion radius 140 meters. Uh, but a missile range increased to 127 kilometers and a DPS of 127. What does that mean? Well, against smaller targets, these are going to be poop. And uh, there we go to the large missile launcher for the Corporation Outpost, which have an astonishing explosion velocity of 69 meters per second, which is very shitty, an explosion radius of uh, 330 meters, which is very large, so against small targets, it's going to do shit. And uh, we got uh, missile range 126 kilometers. This is the biggest missile range, but against small targets, it's going to be poop. So I basically want to pick uh, one of these three weapons. I wouldn't advise um, on fitting one of each because I don't know, it's just shitty. My advice is to focus on um, on the same uh, weapon type 
and if you want to defend it against again it's not something that you can do on your own i really recommend you do launch the capsule outpost if you don't have the money or materials to do the uh, citadel the corporation outpost um, doing the capsule outpost can be managed by an entire corporation the only detriment is you do not have a corporation hangar there's no such thing you cannot set up office you cannot rent offices and you cannot set up corporation hangar so it's going to be really really tricky to have like a corporation uh, base within a capsule outpost but you can still do it with contracts you know do contracts below the limit of some money amount of some isk amount uh, some value amount better said so the audit won't kick in so if you just want to move soft contracts is the way don't do it through market because otherwise people are going to see your market orders and they're going to set up destination for your uh, corporation outposting they go they're gonna know it's in here and uh, once they know it's in here they're just going to bring in the fleet and blap your capsule outpost to sky fucking high so let's get over to fitting now it's currently in low power mode because we don't have anything fitted and we do need to fit something in order for, uh, for the capsule outpost to use fuel uh, this is the managed personal citadel uh, it, it says vulnerable i've got four panels control structure fitting reinforcement exit time and permission to enter before we get into these four um, big things, we're going to go into the menu in the inventory and we're going to tap on the capsule outpost and it should show us, this is a bug by the way, it should show us a fuel tank. So if you see, this is the fuel tank and we need to move some fuel in there. Select the fuel tank and basically you've just put, put fuel in here. But the capsule outpost is not going to activate even though you put fuel in it. So you have to go into the manage section and you have to do a go into the structure fitting. And now we get to fit our stuff. In the low slots, we're going to fit the industry service. There we go, one is activated. And we're going to fit the resource extraction. But so far we have two modules fitted on the low slots. So let's get on to the med slots and fit the standard stasis web. Uh, by the way, the warp disruption is 10 warp jamming strength, which is pretty cool. Uh, you need to fit them all of these. Well, you can basically set up three of the energy neutralizers and just use the corporation uh, members, the players themselves, to uh, to use the webs and the disruptors or the scrams. Uh, depending uh, on what you want to achieve with it, and we're going to touch in on a bit in just a few seconds, uh, fitting the neutralizer. And we have two high slots in which we can basically fit two modules for uh, attacking. So one important aspect about the capsule outpost, it can behave like a ship. It, there's this button here that says control. So once you, you hit control, you can basically control the station as a ship. So you have modules and you can activate them um, on... The, I don't know enemies that are trying to shoot your station down so you have the missiles you have the neutralizer you have the stasis web you have the scramble or disruptor and I don't know why these uh, appear by the way because you can't activate them it has already been activated <laughs> um, but you need target a no available target for the other modules that actually require PvP engagement I'm just going to return to the Citadel now let's see what kind of services that our Capsule Outpost has enabled right now. So we have the industry. Basically, this is the industry um, service center. It allows us to build and to reverse engineer and to refine materials, basically ore and, uh, I don't know, loot. You can turn into minerals and you can use that to build stuff. So now our station is invulnerable, but it's no longer in low power mode because we have stuff fitted to it and basically the only panel that is left to check is the permission to, uh, to enter and 
we're going to talk about reinforcement uh, on a later episode because it's going to be an entire episode to try to explain the mechanics on how the reinforcements uh, happen. So permission to enter is basically one simple menu in which you can select which kind of player can dock, can see and dock inside this station. Uh, so you can make it public and everyone will be able to see it and dock to it. You can make it your contact and you can add some specific contacts. Maybe, I don't know, a bunch of lads that you enjoy playing the game with. Um, I wouldn't recommend your contact hostile. I have no idea why this is here. Uh, current, current cooperation and current alliance. So as this is probably going to be your main base as a corporation, um, in the early beginnings, you're probably going to set it as current corporation. So it will only be visible and dockable by the uh, corporation, your corporation mates. Now, again, I emphasize on the fact that please be aware, for the love of God, do not set up market orders inside the station. Otherwise, other people are going to see that the station exists and they're going to try to map it like add a bookmark to it and they're going to know that it's there and they're going to come to take it down pretty simple so that's pretty much it on today um on the next episode uh, tomorrow we're going to be looking at the resource extraction service center and how does that work and how do you set it up and how do you collect pi because it's an interesting feature but because it's uh it's I don't know, it, it's limited to the same constellation. People usually find uh, good materials like in the same constellation or it can be in the nearby constellation. So, uh, I don't know, maybe if you can set it up to consume more fuel and to cover adjacent constellations as well, this could be some feedback for the developers. But that's pretty much it for today. Don't forget about our weekly community question of the week giveaway. We're going to be announcing our winners for this uh, week on Wednesday. So in order to participate, if you would like to particip participate, of course, please do answer this question. Balance. Which section of the game do you think is the most broken? Which one do you think is it should require? a balance uh, love like the devs should really focus on that as always i hope you learned something thank you guys for watching a very big shout out to my channel supporters and i'll see you guys next time cheers